Hey you guys. Alright, uh, we're sitting in Tolleson, Arizona right now at the JBS facility. Uh, I told you about when I was in uh, picking up the load on that video uh, that I'm in a recap situation. Uh, I want to kind of go over um, in a little bit more detail on the recap versus 34 uh, hour reset thing that I talked about a couple of videos ago in my uh, Danville, uh, Arkansas pickup at Wayne Farms. Um, so I'm going to use my real world situation that I have here to kind of help explain, help explain it. What, like my, what my best case ETA is going to be to the, to my first drop. And then also what my actual ETA will be based on available hours. Uh, cause they're going to be two different things. And I'll kind of walk you through that process using my spreadsheet. Cause the spreadsheet is set up where I can, uh, uh, it, it automatically calculates stuff for me uh, to an extent. Uh, I, I have to do a little bit of manual calculation in my head on one little thing, and we'll get to that, right? But uh, so yeah, my channel, we always like to try to focus on what can uh, we teach somebody who doesn't already know this stuff, or maybe just give insight to uh, what a trucker's world is like to people who are not truckers. Uh, you know, or of course, my kids uh, always watch the channel, so. A little bit of something for everybody, I hope. Um, and you know, if nothing else, at least uh, maybe some stupid entertainment. I don't know. Well, no, you won't get stupid entertainment from me. But uh, you know, it's, like I say, something insightful or you know, a new way to do things or whatever. Hopefully, you get some some kind of value out of it. And that's what my goal is. So uh, we're going to talk first about. Um, Let's figure out how many miles it's going to be from here to our first drop. The first drop will be at Sherwood Foods in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, there's going to be a few different route options. Now, I don't use a GPS. I've talked to you guys about that before. I don't have a GPS device anywhere in my truck. Um, look. No GPS. No GPS anywhere on my windshield. I don't... I don't use GPS. Uh, what I do use is Google Maps uh, to an extent. Now, I did get a question from a new JCT driver recently about, well, if I use Google Maps, how do I avoid, uh, you know, like, say, low railroad crossing bridges or something along that line? You know, usually low bridges are almost always railroad related, so that's why I kind of mentioned that. Um, for the most part, as long as you stay on big roads or the National Highway Network, you're usually not going to have a problem. Uh, now, by what I mean by National Highway Network is interstate highways or U.S. highways. Now, I, I do notice that it's pretty common for people to m confuse U.S. highways with state highways. They are completely different. Uh, they have different construction standards in general. Uh, and, and U.S. highways are uh, are federally funded. State highways are state funded. Um, they could be built in similar ways or same way, uh, depending on where you're at. It just really depends on where you are. Like California, we have a number of state highways that are actually built like freeways. Uh, highway 99, uh, Highway 60, Highway 91, uh, Highway 57. Those are all state highways, but you go drive on them. They're inter uh, they're, you might as well call them an interstate highway because that's effectively what they are is uh, uh, a limited access freeway. Uh, you know, they may or may not have uh, conformed to the same construction standard as the interstate highway construction standard. It's, you know, well, maybe not Highway 99, but uh, yeah, to an extent, though, there's, yeah, it does follow it. Um, not all of it, but, you know, parts of it, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there are little differences there. I'm not going to go into all those uh, details about that uh, on this video. Because we're mainly focused on what's, uh, what do we need to do to get from here to Detroit. So I'm going to walk you through my process. And, you know, not just, you know, there's some of my thought processes like why would I go this route versus another route or something along that line or how long should it take me to cover this distance or things like that. So first, let's go ahead and go on to Google Maps 
And uh, let me pull it up first. I need to pull up my screen recorder too. All right, so um, we'll zoom in on where we're at right now here at the JBS facility in Tolleson, Arizona. I want to go to Sherwood Foods in Detroit. Right now, I'm not really concerned about navigating once I'm in the Detroit area from whatever highways or interstates in that area over to the uh, you know, to the actual customer. We'll kind of maybe cover that. Uh, I could probably cover that little detail on that uh, in a little bit here. But right now, I just want to get the basic idea of what routes do I have as good options or what, what options does it suggest that I take? Uh, to get from here to there. Um, and I'll give you some of my, you know, I'll interject some of my personal experiences with those routes as well. Okay, so I already got Sherwood Foods saved as a start location. I'm going to just hit directions right now. All right, my apologies on that. Um, yeah, as one of the local area people who watches my channel, uh, I've been, uh, I've got kind of regularly contact, uh, stay in touch with him. Uh, he's going to come, um, come meet up uh, pick me up and we'll go grab a bite to eat or something here uh, while I'm here in town and uh, anyway uh, so without dragging on with uh, ramble stuff let's get to the point all right so we got here Sherwood Foods as the destination I need to create a start location uh, I'm gonna use this I'm gonna just hit that and then your location and automatic right there uh, now I don't go past this screen here that it's going to pop up. I, uh, I don't hit start. Uh, this is where a lot of people get confused when I try to explain to them by phone. Don't hit the start button. All I care about is how many miles away I am and which general route options are, are is it suggesting. So it, it's showing three different route options here. One of them, uh, I'm going to zoom in here and show you, but I can tell just looking at it, that the suggested route is to work my way up to Holbrook, Arizona, and then take I-40 across to Albuquerque, and then take, and we'll go ahead and zoom in, and then take I-25 north from Albuquerque up to Springer, and get up on uh, US-412 and US-56. That'll take me across over to Boise City, Oklahoma, same location where I bypassed that way station and got ticketed and ended up eventually beating that ticket. If you guys haven't seen those videos, <laughs> check them out. Um, all right, so that ends up up in the Dodge City, Kansas area. There's, I see, there's Dodge City there. And you then end up taking US 50 across over to Newton, Iowa, and continue into Emporia. And then pick up I-35 in Emporia. And from I-35 says take US-36 across from Cameron over through Chillicothe and Macon and all that. Uh, I have sometimes gone through that area. Those are all good truck routes. I've been on all of them. I know from I know them from experience. Uh, but there's a caveat here I'm going to talk about on this in a minute. Uh, all right, so US-36 to I-72. And, uh, and then in Springfield, get on I-55 northbound, take it up to Joliet, Joliet, but we call it Joliet. Uh, Mish, where you at? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a page out of your book there, Joliet. Uh, then get on I-80 eastbound from there, and when we get over here, just past Gary, over by Portage, uh, well, actually, we're, that's kind of 80, 90, and 94, whatever, kind of run in the same area together-ish. Going to take 94 up, up along the, uh, the Lake Michigan side of Michigan, and it'll just take that straight across through Kalamazoo, and then it'll eventually take us through Ann Arbor and straight into Detroit. And now I've never been to this customer before, and uh, apparently it's over on the west side of Detroit. Uh, ooh. I see a lot of small uh, small streets right there. That, that can be a concern for me because I see that. It says probably residential. Probably, uh, and then I also see train tracks right there. So that is something I want to look at as well. Um, however, looking right here on this, 
I can see that the road that it's suggesting I exit at, there is a traffic light right there. And I can also see that the road goes over the top of the railroad tracks, not under them. So I don't have to worry about a low bridge clearance there. Um, I only have to worry about a low bridge clearance or possibility of one if I see the railroad tracks going over the top of the road, not the other way around. But in this case, the road goes over the top of the tracks. We're good to go there. Um, yeah, and the only way to get into that, that's a dead-end street that Sherwood is on. So the only way to get into there is through this street here. So that's going to have to be the way I go. I just... I'll definitely want to take a look at uh, maybe on the street view, uh, but I'll do it on my tablet later. Um, what this turn is like, how tight is it, how, how narrow the lane is, how much shoulder area is there to work with. I want to know in advance how, uh, how wide I need to make my turn on these two streets and all that, because they could make a difference. Uh, like, I don't want to be finding, finding some unwanted surprise there. Oh shit, how do I make this turn? And you know, like I, I, maybe I'm not set up for it right, and there's too much traffic, and I can't make the turn because I'm not set up right, and I'm too close or something. So this is where trip planning does you a lot of good. You can catch on to this stuff and know what you're getting yourself into before you even uh, get there. It's you know something that every driver and of a CMV should be doing, not blindly following GPS. All right, uh, now. I will say there's a caveat to this route here, and that is I have personal experience already with the US 412 and 56 route over from um, Springer, New Mexico over to Dodge City. Um, okay, it's a good truck route, but uh, a good chunk of that is just barren nothingness and 60 mile an hour speed limit from my last time I remember. Did I really do 60? No, but uh, if you don't see any cops in the area, I'm just, okay, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but if you're one, if you're a totally by the book person and you're not going to speed and you don't want to take chances, I totally understand. Um, but if that is your MO. Don't take 412 and 56. You're going to take have a longer route going that way. You won't have as much to go I mean, as many towns to go through. There is a way station in the town of, over there, not not just Boise City. There's another one. Uh, I don't remember what town it was, but it's kind of off like it's not even right along that route. It's kind of over on the south end of a town that you end up going through and you have to like detour down to it if it's open. It's stupid. Um, anyway, let's say 60 zone, I don't want to deal with. So, and, and there's, there's just a bunch of nothingness there. Uh, if you get tired or if you want to, if you need a stop or whatever, you kind of have limited options there for places where you can park and take a break or get fuel or whatever the case might be. So I would say, uh, that would be the, the less, the least desirable of the routes in general. Uh, now I have, I'm not against using that route if I, if there's some kind of issue with Highway 54 that I want to avoid. Uh, US 54, you can see here. Uh, the, the, the next route would be to take, uh, let's see what the mileage is first here on that. 1,988 miles is what it's saying for that route that I just covered. The next route would be the, basically the US 54 route where you take I-40 across to Tucumcari, New Mexico. Uh, that's 1,965 miles, so it's a little bit less, uh, about 20 miles shorter, uh, roughly the same amount of travel time. Uh, now, Google says an hour, uh, a day and seven hours. Do not go by that. Uh, this is assuming you're in a car and you don't have to take 10-hour breaks at regular intervals like you do in a truck. I don't give a fucking rat's ass how many miles it's, or how many hours and days, whatever, Google tries to tell me it's going to take. I do my own planning, and you'll see it on the spreadsheet in a little bit here. But that route basically takes US 54 across, uh, and even then there are a couple of options there. Um, so right here in Pratt, Kansas, that's one of the options there. You can take uh, Kansas Highway 61. Uh, you don't see it labeled there, but I know that it's K61 because I've done it many times. Um, 
Take that up to, to, to Hutchinson, Kansas. James, uh, James Ewing area, uh, one of your areas. And then the same route as, uh, as the first route from there on in. Uh, the other option is to stay on uh, US 50, uh, 54 and 400 all the way out to Wichita. Wichita. I'm, I'm messing here, guys. Uh, basically, end up on I-35 and then then join up with the other route uh, in Emporia. Uh, so that's one of the other options there. Uh, those are both similar. It's just sometimes I don't want to deal with Wichita, so I'd rather take the the Pratt to Hutchinson route you know, on on K61. There's a and there's a Casey's truck stop right there at that same, right at that corner where 61 and 54 meet up. All right, last would be. Uh, a little bit longer route. This is 2,005 miles, so it's about 40 miles longer than the US 54 route. However, you stay on interstates the entire time. Uh, from well, I think for the most part. This would be I-40 over to Oklahoma City, and then US 4. I mean I-44 up through Oklahoma, from Oklahoma City up into Joplin. Now those are toll roads from uh, Oklahoma City to Joplin. So if you're Trying to avoid tolls for whatever your reason is, uh, don't go that way. That's all there. That's what that's the pro and con about I-44. It's longer route, uh, and it's also a toll road. However, our terminals along that route, so that is definitely one I might consider doing. And then U.S. I mean I-44 up to St. Louis, and then take I-55. It's everything else. Once I get to Springfield, is uh, all the same, regardless. So. Uh, that's one of the options. Uh, could even take 70 out of St. Louis over to 57. Take 57 up to uh, I-80, just south of Chicago. Uh, south Holland-ish kind of area. I don't know where it actually picks up. I forget. It's somewhere. It's near South Holland. Uh, you guys you are from Chicago or there a lot more often might remember better than I do. All right. So... Um, that said, I'm going to go ahead and at least tentatively plan on that route there, the, the US 54 route, Tucumcari to Pratt to Hutchinson to Newton, Iowa to uh, Emporia, Kansas. All right, so we know that, but now something else you want to consider, weather. So I mentioned on the pickup video with this JBS load that I'm expecting colder than normal weather and possibly even snow on the way over there. So... Now I might want that, that'll definitely make me consider, uh, I mean, weigh my options on whether I want to take one route or another. Like one route might look like the most uh, ideal route to take, but if I see that it's expecting snow and another route that I could take is not expecting snow, take a wild guess which one of those two I'm going to t uh, pick. I'm going to take the one that's not expecting snow. I don't have a problem with driving in snow, but I have to drive slower in it. Also, my big concern with snow is there's always an accident that ends up shutting down the freeway. It's, you know, if, I don't want to be around other people if they are, they're the ones having the accident. And I also don't want to get caught up, stuck in uh, delays of uh, hours or whatever because the roadway is blocked by these same knuckleheads who have accident, accidents. So I don't want anything to do with that. So we need to do some weather planning here. I'm going to go on to my weather channel app. Uh, now, what I'm going to show you here, it's free on the, on the mobile app, at least for now. But if you go on the website, the weatherchannel.com or weather.com, whatever you call it, website, and use the same radar layer, uh, it's a premium feature So and you'll have to pay for uh, this I'm assuming I'll probably eventually have to pay for it, but whatever. Okay, right here I got the radar. I don't really care where it's zoomed into or what time or anything. I'm going to hit this all layers button. I'm going to scroll down to future 48 snowfall. And I'm going to come over to the map. And then I'm going to use this time slider thing and move it all the way to the far right end. That'll get me 48 hours into the future. Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, that's uh, Pacific 
Pacific Daylight Time or Mountain Standard Time. I'm in Arizona. Remember, Arizona does not observe daylight, saving, daylight savings time. So, technically, they're Mountain Standard Time 365 days a year. All right, so I'm going to zoom out. And we do see that there is uh, some snow forecasted. Uh, it looked like a little bit up here and mainly in the mountains over there, uh, just to the north and west of I-25 over by Santa Fe. And remember, uh, I think it was right here. Uh, is that my U.S. highway there? I don't know. That highway that we were talking about on the trip planning, I don't know where it... Oh, Springer, no. So, doesn't look like that's going to be affected, but there will be snow uh, in the general neighborhood there. Uh, not going to be much. This will be the concern up here. So, so far, we're getting up at least into Illinois. doesn't look like it matters which way I go as far as the weather is concerned. Um... Yeah, I'm not going to get snowed on no matter which of those routes I decide to take. So it's just a matter of getting from Illinois, uh, from, we'll just say Springfield, Illinois to Detroit. That's where we're concerned with. Am I going to get snowed on and then how much are they expecting and where should I expect to see it? It's dynamic, so between now and when I do get over there, things could change. But I'm going to zoom in. All right, Springfield to Detroit. Um, mainly going to be coming up here toward Joliet. And then across over here on the south end of Lake Michigan and work our way up across US, I mean, I-94. Does not look like I'm going to see any snow at all until I'm uh, almost into Ann Arbor. And that's even if I'm even there by then. Um, I don't know, but... I have to look three days out as well because I don't deliver in Detroit until the 20th. Uh, it could be early. Or actually, never mind. I have an appointment time at 0700 there, so I just looked at my load assignment. Uh, so, I mean, like I say there is a possibility I will see more snow when I'm up in, by the time I do actually get up in that area, but tentatively for now, I don't expect to see any weather concerns as far as the white stuff is concerned until I'm already right there near Ann Arbor and it's not going to be much that light blue there only tells me it's going to be an inch or two it's nothing nothing to really concern to myself with um, yeah and then by then I'm already almost in Detroit uh, when you get up here start getting a little bit thicker there by Cadillac uh, you'll see a couple spots where it starts to get a little bit heavier that's probably like three four inches or something like that three to five as you see on the legend there or you get up here in uh, Canada you got that pink stuff there uh, that is the really heavy that's like almost two feet of snow or so that's a, that's a whole bunch that I would want to avoid if I but I don't have to worry about being up that way anyway so uh, just but what's there is probably going to come down toward because uh, watch uh, when I animate it you can see it building up up there. Uh, what's that? Uh, I forget that water there. It's uh, I forget where this body of water is up in Canada. This huge one up there. But it looks like it comes right down toward the Great Lakes. And if it's coming down toward the Great Lakes, that means it's going to probably hit Michigan and uh, possibly New York while I'm over there. So, yeah, we're going to have some fun there. All right, so that covers the weather planning part of it, at least for now. Uh, I also look at wind, uh, especially like if I'm going to go through Wyoming. Uh, I'm not going to be going through Wyoming, but if I, let's just say I'm going to go through there, I always look at Elk Mountain at the very least. Because uh, Elk Mountain is very notorious for dangerously strong winds. Uh, I, won't put my, I won't drive my truck through there if I think I'm going to get shut down for strong winds or for snow either. So... All right, so I think that covers the, the weather planning part of it. Now let's get to the ETA and available HOS planning. Uh, HOS being hours of service, by the way, in case you guys are not really familiar. 
All right, so uh, now we're on uh, my spreadsheet, my Excel file that I use. Uh, I say I can do a lot of this in my head, but this makes it easier. All right, so as we talked about on that trip plan there, uh, the route that I will probably take is 1,965 or so miles. What I usually do is round it up to the nearest 10. So I'm going to put uh, 1970. Uh, put it right here, distance to cover. Uh, current date is the 16th. I'll be leaving here at 19, we'll just say 2000, so 2300 because that's Detroit time. All right, it's 60 miles an hour, uh, and it's due on the 20th at 7 a.m. All right, so it's telling me I'm going to need about uh, just under 33 hours of on duty time to cover that load and I need two 10 hour breaks uh, I might need to plan an extra 10 hour break in there though because uh, 1970 that's over 650 mile shifts uh, which yeah, I can do but running up from Mesa to Holbrook because I am right now with all the things going on with I-17 I'm trying to stay away from there uh, AZ not even recommended trying to avoid I-17 if you don't really need to be on it for uh, you know like lane closures and stuff uh, all that construction crap but uh, so I'm gonna end up getting slowed down going up to Holbrook and the, the 1970 actually does and uh, does consider the fact that I'm going through uh, that Mesa to Holbrook route and not I-17 um, the other thing is uh, US 54, you can't do, uh, it's hard to do 660 mile shift going through there. Uh, if you, if, maybe in the middle of the night when there's not much stupid traffic, but even then when there's nobody around, some of those towns in Oklahoma still piss me off and slow me down with uh, red lights that are red for nobody. I uh, just expect it. And it's all mostly in Oklahoma, and I would maybe even say western Kansas as well, uh, to an extent, but mostly Oklahoma. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to need to plan on an extra 10-hour break, but that's, no, that's not a problem, because if you, if you look down here, because uh, what it does is takes my, uh, my raw number of hours, adds in two 10-hour two breaks, so that's a, it's going to add in 20 hours worth of 10-hour breaks there. It's 52, and and then the raw ETA would be 75. I would say 76, but that would be if today had 76 hours to it. So I have a formula that I work with here where it automatically figures out like how many days in advance, you know, that raw ETA comes out to in terms of what exact date and what exact time that my best case ETA would be. Uh, but like I say, if I need to plan an extra 10 hour break in there, which I am going to do, uh, if I have an ETA of about 4 a.m. on the 19th and add 10 hours, that would put me in there in uh, Detroit area around 1400 on the 19th. But probably get up in that general area, not actually all the way into Detroit, but somewhere close by. Uh, park it there and then go make my delivery and then run on. Um, run my way up toward Syracuse from there um, all right so that would be best case there um, now this is one of those cases where I am running out uh, if I didn't have HOS delays at all I would be running at least 24 hours ahead of schedule because like I said it is due on the at 7 a.m. on the 20th little on the tight side though if I were to do a 34 I'd be a little uh, I'd be uncomfortable with that so uh, I would be more apt to just go ahead and run on the recaps uh, I don't want to uh, why stress myself out over that um, to, over to, just to get a 34 hour reset in and route when I like to run at night and I don't want to have to stress out about whether uh, some even the most uh, minute delay uh, can cause me to show up late. Uh, nope, not to mention, uh, generally you want to show up about an hour before your appointment time. So really that only leaves me about two hours of wiggle room if I do a uh, 34 hour reset. That's for uh, at least three shifts to cover. That's too close, that's too tight for comfort for me. I, it's, 
I'm not going to stress myself over that. I want a little bit more space to work with than that, personally. That's just me, though. Some of you guys might be more willing to do the 34 anyway. But now let's look at our, our uh, recap situation there. I don't want my thing turning off, so. You are out of hours of service driving time. No. Oh, my God. Okay, so, according to my thing, I have 4.57 left on my 70-hour clock right now. Uh, I will be rolling again later to this evening, later tonight. Uh, like I said, it'll be 2300 Detroit time. That's Eastern um, Eastern uh, Daylight time. 2200, so I won't, give you, I won't be getting my tonight recaps back yet by then. Uh, speaking of, tonight I get 7.10 back in recaps. And then next day I get 1014 back and then 920 and then 941 and then 434 727 936 and so far 656 I'll be adding to that 656 when I run the uh, run the first half of my uh, my next shift later tonight or this evening so now where this come into handy is this number here, round it up to the nearest hour. Uh, sometimes I'll even add an hour at least because especially if I'm gonna be going through, uh, I said a whole brick where I know I'm gonna get slowed down or US 54 where I know I'm gonna get slowed down. Uh, it's a good idea to add an extra hour. So I would say 34 hours is what I will need. When do I have that to work with? Right there on the 20th. Uh, I'm gonna be short by a little over an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe even two and a half hours on the 19th if I run on the recaps. So I would, I'll have to plan on needing up to about three hours of my 1020 recaps to, uh, to get to Detroit if I run on the recaps all the way there, which is my plan. So given that, that they are one hour ahead of when I get my recaps, and I need uh, maybe three of my three of those recap hours somewhere in that ballpark. And I would expect my ETA to Detroit to be about 4 a.m. on the delivery date, based on that information. So again, I, I could do a 34, but I'm not going to. I don't want to stress myself out over that. And like I said, I, I like to run at night when the roads are more quiet. Um, so well, I'll, that'll be my plan here. But like I said, we all have our own preferences. As I mentioned in that, uh, that Wayne Farms pickup video, uh, uh, a 34 hour reset is ultimately just a 10 hour break with an entire day added on to the back end of it. So that is your big clue there. If, uh, if you need to cover a load, pick up a load, whatever, do you have time and route with that thing to do a 34? Yeah, so you can have a fresher clock to. Uh, you know, to get better load uh, reload options with afterward uh, but yeah in my case I'm not gonna worry about it I still getting plenty of miles yeah could I possibly set myself up for even more miles doing a 34 sure but I don't need to stress out over it okay uh, it's just me personally uh, and we all have our own needs um, all right so going on about that other question about how do you avoid railroad crossings yeah, like uh, we're actually low bridges. Uh, one way is to look up the, you know, look up on the uh, whatever that state is on uh, their DOT or um, you just Google even for it. Uh, let's just say Michigan low clearances, uh, low bridges or something, and there'll actually be like a DOT website more likely that will tell you the complete list of low clearance bridges uh, in the entire state and you just find where it applies. Or, if you get a motor vehicle carrier atlas, uh, that will also show you where low clearance bridges are. Uh, I'm not gonna get mine out, it's an old one anyway, but you can always use that as an option. Uh, or like I just showed you on my, uh, on my screen record thing there. Uh, if I see railroad tracks going over the top of a road that I'm gonna be on, then I know I need to be concerned about it. Yeah, but even then, if I see railroad tracks going over the top, 
it might be an at grade crossing. That means where you, you know, where you have a crossing gate or something where you have to actually wait for the train to go past before you can continue. Or it could be where you go underneath the railroad tracks on, on a bridge, and then that's where, like, okay, what's this bridge clearance? If I do see that, and it does, it does appear to be grade separated, then I'll go on my tablet, put my little uh, my Street View man right over there in front of the bridge, and then look for what the clearance is. And if I see it, it's adequate. All right, we're good to go. I also look for like truck restriction signs sometimes on Street View as well. Uh, I'll like he's on his way out of here. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, well, that's it for that. Uh, it's far to be plenty to cover. I know that screen record on my phone with uh, thing was already over 23 minutes, so I can't imagine it's plenty long. So I'm gonna call this one a day and uh, hope you guys all got some great uh, tips or info out of this. And all right, we'll see you guys in Detroit. All right, y'all have a great day. See ya.